starting lineups. Creighton really needs great scoring from Molly Mogensen. They win when she is shooting efficiently, but an important development for Marquette. They will be without for the second straight game, Isis. Liza Carlin, she has a mouth injury and is currently out indefinitely for the second straight game. Liza Carlin is the third leading scorer for the Golden Eagles. Coming off a 79-75 to loss against Providence. That was the Friars' first top 25 win since 2013. So an opportunity for Jim Flannery and the Blue Jays to bounce back. They played against six ranked teams this season. They have been battle tested. They understand how to win games in different ways. It'll be a really good showing here today, but the focus is going to have to be defense. Which team is going to defend at a high level for 40 minutes? And Lauren Jensen will immediately start this half court offense for Creighton. The team nine and five this season, three and three in the Big East. They go into the post, and Morgan Molly starts things off. She's been really improving her mid and low post game. Just been really terrific, and especially on the left side of the floor is where she can hurt you. Skying for that rebound was Chloe Murata, not able to corral it. A solid rebounding team is Marquette against the Creighton team. That lacks in that category in the Big East this season. Rachel Saunders, one of the most experienced Blue Jays. This team with four returners coming up. An elite eight trip. They're down to five for Mogensen, who has to throw it up, and it's nowhere close. Good one on one defense there from Mpumu. Jordan King, who attracted, I think I counted at least four white jerseys around her. They slow her down and make other players beat them today. That foul, the first on Rachel Saunders, and her importance all the more vital because of the absence of Liza Carlin. She will guard King for most of the game. It just has to be smart and communicate. Going to go into the post to Molly again. The drop step to perfection. She had that one-on-one -on -one matchup and was able to use that size advantage. Well, we asked Coach Flannery, I mentioned watching his games, you're seeing more mid-post action out of Molly, and he said, we're going to go to her until she gets tired. Marquette, 0 for 3 from the floor to start. Her team coming off a win against DePaul. And Kumu has that rejected. The interior defense by Morgan Molly right there. Okay, quickly getting back. And Molly drains the long three. And a timeout called with Creighton leading seven to nothing. Can't give them easy points, and they also must score in the paint. Something we're seeing early is that mid-post, low-post action, mainly more Molly, Morgan Molly that needs to score that. And then for the Golden Eagles, they must limit the transition threes of Creighton. You know that they rely on knocking down the outside shot. And lastly, win the rebounding battle. Second traveling violation for Chloe Morata. 15 seconds on the shot clock for the Blue Jays, still leading 7 0. In the early goings, quick closeout there. And down into the post again, it's Molly who misfires. That's just her first miss today. And sort of 3 of 3, but that's how her game has continued to grow in high school. Just a spot up three point shooter, called the shots, played how she wanted, as in Kubo. Knocks down the first shot of the game for Marquette. Had been 0 for 4 to start things off. Good ball movement as well for the Golden Eagles. Just reversing the ball. And then Murata hit the skip pass. And Nkumu ready to step it in and knock it down. She quickly gets out there on Jensen as well. Have to always be thinking about the three-point line against the Blue Jays. Still leading the Big East with 8.8 three-pointers per contest. They had 11 in the first half against the Friars. Here is Jensen, and she gets her third attempt to fall, and it's a shooter. You want to see that go in. It's really just the attention that the Blue Jays, uh, excuse me, that the Golden Eagles are forced to give Morgan Molly, and Jensen wide open because Molly attracts two, sometimes three defenders in that mid-post area. Murata facing up, made a quick decision in the post that it pays off. Really love when Murata can face up and, and play within that 12, 15 foot range. She's got such good touch around her. In her fifth year, third generation Golden Eagle as well. And continuing to grow her game, Isis. She's nearly doubled 
her scoring output this season. She's taking advantage of the opportunities that she's getting offensively, but she's also a workhorse. You'll see that a lot of her points coming in for the Blue Jays, as well as Keani Lockett's freshman there, very excited for. Now finally healthy. Murata surrounded, throws it up off the backboard, and a great job with defensive rebounds by the Creighton Blue Jays. The three, not going to fall that time for Haran. Back the other way, no numbers for the Golden Eagles. That's not going to stop Rose and Kubo. They'll bring in the freshman Mackenzie Hare, one of their top three-point threats, as they're shooting just 30% from the floor right now. Creighton 5 of 11. Strong and aggressive on-ball defense. That's going to open up Ron Stick, who goes all the way to the rim. Jordan King off the opposite leg, too strong off glass, and again that rebounding paying dividends. Offensive rebounds, Marquette held to just one here so far with two minutes on the clock. Jensen going to reset, being guarded by King. Don't often see Creighton slow things down in the half court, and there's another beautiful mid-range jet. A clear out opportunity there for Jensen and just straight line right hand drive and then able to create some separation to get a pull up off well, Maybe an opportunity for Flannery and the staff to get different kinds of looks for her too Not just beyond the three-point Well, I tell you what they're gonna be a much more dangerous team with the way that they run their offense and just the off-ball screens and knocking down outside shots But also if they could start to get Jensen operating in those one-on-one -on -one ISO opportunities We've already seen Morgan Molly have a lot of success with that early as well Molly and Jensen combining for 14 of their team, 16 points. Here's Ronsett. She has the other one. The fade just drops through a beautiful post move. Talk about the touch there from Ronsett. Someone who knows these rims pretty well. And the defensive rebound for Creighton. Jensen right there on the weak side. The freshman hard dribble and a pull up will not go too strong. And back to the Golden Eagles. Second different shot and game clock and a turnover by Marquette. Running the floor and the easy finish on the other side. Just things rolling for Creighton right now. Jamie Horan on the receiving end as the crowd swells here. Fires and after the first 10 minutes, everything going Creighton's way. They end on an 8 0 run and lead 20 to 6 after the first 10 minutes. Of a handful of Minnesota natives on both of these teams. Molly kicks it out 4 3. It is good. Kennedy Townsend knocks it down, and we know top to bottom this team can knock down. Picks. King off a pick and roll, played well by Creighton. That's been a reason why they haven't been able to find good looks. You see a white jersey everywhere the ball is. Good pump fade, Murata, beautiful in the face up game. Well, in the first quarter, she got the ball in the same spot and took the jump shot. So that time, Molly defending the jump shot and able to get up, get her up and then go around her. You see Creighton frequently moving the ball around the perimeter. Doesn't stay in one place for very long. Ron Sink, basket and the foul. The foul will go on Chloe Murata, just her first. Getting it to the low block off of post-ups, but I'd like to see them drive the gaps a little bit more, force some rotations, and then find some players open. Clark into the paint, dumping it down to Murata. That's the high efficient shot they need. Well, again, and Clark doing a good job of driving the gap, right? You drive the gap off the bounce, you force the defense to collapse on you, and then she found the open player. Speaking of an easy shot, right back on the other side. Creighton continues to roll up 18. That's their largest of today. King gets it right back. And that's it. Again, they are just 
swarming on King, not allowing her to get open. And obviously not what they wanted to see. Lauren Jensen, the Blue Jays, three of ten from long range, and they will not ever shy away from that shot. King held to two points so far. Murata along the baseline. Her face-up game has been unstoppable here. Doing a great job of just taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one situations as Murata, and they definitely have her as a focal point. Eight points early in this game. The three balls, all kinds of scoring for Emma Ronson. King with five seconds left, hand in her face that time though, and picked up by Ronson. That's going to be the story of the half for Coach Duffy and the Golden Eagles is how can we get easier shots? What do they need to do? I first think it starts defensively, though. They've got to be able to get stops so they can get some better looks in transition. And then in the half court, I think it might just be playing more one-on-one -on -one basketball, seeing if they can challenge the individual defense of the Blue Jays. The patience of the Blue Jays pays off. Jensen and easy, too. The way the ball moves for Creighton. I think it's a highlight and a bright spot for Coach Flannery, the way that Jensen has been able to score on the ball. He told us that he wanted to play her more on the ball, more off ball screens, thought she could find some success, and she's found it here early. She scored from the outside, but really a lot of her buckets have come on drives. Three of her seven attempts from inside three-point range. Also just snagged her third rebound as well. And you a little bit different, too, with the ball in her hand igniting this offense. And you mentioned rebounding. One of the reasons Creighton is in charge in this game, plus eight on the boards. That is uncharacteristic of a Coach Duffy team for the Golden Eagles. Under 10 to go for the Blue Jays. Bachelor would have been a nice one to drop in and a foul going for that rebound. The help defense for Marquette, where is it? Might be one of the first things they talk about from Megan Duffy. Ten seconds left for the Blue Jays. Here is Bachelor again, powering her way to the rim and the largest lead of today for the Blue Jays. Missing a lot of success for the Blue Jays, driving the baseline, doing a great job of just straight line drives and then finishing. will reverse it, but stolen by Molly. Still time left for Ronson. She is stopped, but an all-around effort for Creighton. A commanded 35-14 to 14 lead over Marquette. Second largest halftime lead of the season for the Blue Jays. Meanwhile, Marquette 0 for 5 this season when tied or trailing at the half. I can do that for the first time this season under Megan Duffy. You can imagine it was a talkative locker room. With the kind of first half they had. Five seconds to go. Creighton is going to make Jordan King throw it up and splashes it in. No more difficult make we've seen in this gym. Sometimes for a score, that's all you need is to see the ball go in and a swish right there for King. Maybe that will get her going offensively. She has had a hand in her face every shot. She has been surrounded on every pick and roll, but that time gets it to go. Ronsick. Well, defensively, it's been a good start for the Golden Eagles. Just back to back plays where they've guarded solid. They've been able to get the defensive rebound and then get good looks. Not able to fall there, though, for Nkumu been that kind of shooting night where even if they do get good looks still not falling 26 percent from the floor as a team Mitchell Saunders gets into the paint in and out back out again that is great basketball slow start offensively for both of these teams that pass not strong into the post. Luckily, Murata able to hold on to it. Offensive rebound, La Chapelle, and a traveling violation. Her feet solidified before she traveled. Before that, Murata had such a deep post up inside, but not enough zip on that pass. Jensen finds herself free. She'll knock down the long two. 
but off the ball screen action, right? Not settling for the three-point shot, instead getting to the mid-range game. And I don't think Coach Duffy has any choice but to take a timeout. Lauren Jensen here off the screen. Little pro dribble, easy pull up, and Creighton. A game high, 11 points, very efficient. Isis, five of eight shooting, one for four from three point range. So you're right, she is taking advantage of what she is finding. And inside that line, Murata with the turnover. Creighton has wrecked havoc defensively against a team that's very accustomed to dishing that out themselves in the Big East. Molly, quick release, she's got it. You need a good supporting cast. Everyone is going to have one or two, maybe three of your lucky, really good go-to players. And so I think the Wildcats have done a good job of putting together a good supporting cast around Maddie Segrist. And then because she's so efficient, you can expect 20, 25 plus points a game from her, knowing that everyone else just has to pick up the extra task. It had been about five minutes since the last point by Marquette before that basket on the other side by Murata. It's been that kind of offensive night. They're shooting 24% and everything going for the Creighton Blue Jays. This team, again, with the incredible run that they went on in the tournament last year, you understand just what it takes to win games in February and in March. And it takes having a couple different looks, ideas, defenses up your sleeve. One of them could be bringing Jensen on the ball and then also having her play off the ball. Another one can, though, be Morgan Molly and just giving the ball to her in the mid post and having her operate against any. Anyone. Bachelor, beautiful give and go. Love the decision by Bachelor. Rather than staying on the three point line and waiting to knock down a three, cut in the interior, found a little open pocket at the logo and showed her touch a little bit. Another easy basket inside, and Marquette has strung together a couple baskets. Consistently dominant from the start. Jumped out to a 7 0 lead. Never looked back. Inside Bachelor, more playmaking by Creighton. Liza Carlin for this team, not able to play today because of an injury. She was out in their last game versus DePaul, but again, their third leading scorer. She's one of their top players in terms of minutes, averages seven and a half rebounds per game. That is a lot that they're missing on both ends of the floor for Coach Duffy. She is out indefinitely with a mouth injury. That knocked down by Jordan King. That's the first three today for Marquette. They had been 0 of 10 at that point. And in fact, Creighton has not, had not allowed a three against Marquette since going back to the Big East tournament. Jordan King now has snuck into double figures with 11 and also four rebounds. But again, just a, a really tough day for her. Felt like she couldn't get into an offensive flow. And after this game, there would just be a lot of film, a lot of tape, a lot of understanding game trends, understanding what can be better about our team so this doesn't happen again. Especially because now they learn they're going to have to adapt without playing in this conference. You have players and teams like you mentioned. Villanova, like DePaul, where you throw everything you have at a couple of players. This really is so well-rounded. But maybe that can set them on a better course because they know what's to come. They know they're going to be without her for some time. Well, and you figure it out without her, right? Because then once you get her back, hopefully she enters a well-oiled machine where Marquette can figure out some of these kinks. But again, it's going to be some of their non-main players that are going to have to step up, right? Can Claire Kafez start to put the ball in the basket a little bit more? Can Kennedy Miles off the bench be a little bit more assertive in the post? They talked highly of Makaya Williams coming off a career-high nine rebounds when she played DePaul in the last game. So they've got some bright spots, some players that can step up, but they got step up offensively and be able to put the ball in the basket. Also playing their fifth straight game against a team that qualified for last year's NCAA tournament. Ronsick leaves it short and we will head to the fourth quarter here in Omaha. Brayton came into this game not known as a defensive team. That was Marquette. But they have applied the pressure Murata rips down that rebound. Jordan King has scored nine straight 
for the Golden Eagles. And really defensively for Creighton, I just think it's their response to their last loss versus Providence. Did not expect to lose that. We mentioned Coach Flannery said it was a disappointing loss. But defensively, they just did not hold their own. They got beat off the dribble, off the pass, in one-on-one -on -one situations. So here, we're just seeing a focus more and intentionality on team defense. Can you rotate? Can you be in help? Can you communicate in transition? And I really feel like their offense has, let, has been high-powered because of their defense. 51-27 after that beautiful baseline jumper by Lauren Jensen. And getting the three to fall, their second today. As Marquette tries to get some offense going. Mackenzie Hayer, second on the team in three-point field goals this season. Boganson looking to get her first points, and she does. Normally plays a lot of minutes because she's that glue player. She makes sure that everyone gets the ball. She continues to run the offense. She's always moving and cutting. Just a really experienced player for Coach Flannery that he trusts on the floor at all times. The definition of an unselfish player. Absolutely. Doesn't need the spotlight on her and just does the job. More beautiful basketball. Jamie Ferran and one. I've been impressed with the play of Jamie Horan here this afternoon. She has just been smarter. Look at the slip right there. Just saw the pocket, saw the gap where she could get to, and then saw the defender was sleeping. Beautiful move right there, and that's just a high IQ play. You gotta work smarter rather than harder sometimes, and Horan did just there. That foul on Kennedy Miles. A turnover by the Golden Eagles. Good effort by Jensen. A lot of success for Creighton today with Jensen, the primary ball handler. Well, this is going to be, I think, a key signature win for Creighton in the Big East. Another drive there by Saunders. So Molly's staying in the game with four, her four personal fouls. Collapsing inside and forcing another turnover. That's 10 for Marquette today. And Lauren Jensen quickly gets it away. The basketball has been beautiful by the Blue Jays. He saw a fist punt from Jim Flannery. He's excited about his squad. She's a quiet kid, but he really thinks she chose Creighton more for the school, less the basketball reason. Creighton could go on this afternoon to improve to four and three in Big East play, 10 and five overall. We mentioned that tough schedule as Jensen glides to the rim. So impressed again with the way that they play defensively and then offensively picking different spots. And these are key minutes right now for the five subs that just came in for Creighton. They're gonna be needed down the stretch. Haran, one of the key players off the bench, makes another play. And Creighton has so many high percentage opportunities today in the flow of their offense. 16 assists on more than half of their made field goals. So just sharing the basketball, and, and really what I like about their offense as well is they dribble with purpose. There are not empty dribbles within their offense. When they're dribbling, it's looking to make an advantage. It's looking to engage defenders. Just doing a great job sharing the basketball. Jordan King still hustling after that loose ball. Kennedy Miles gets on top of it. Outstanding effort, and Marana travels. It's been that type of day for Marquette. After their loss to Providence. And then look what happened here. The bounce back. It's always the worst when you play a team after they lose a game. They weren't supposed to lose. Bachelor, basket and the foul. Top to bottom. Great performances by the Blue Jays. Harley Bachelor off the bounce, taking the contact, the easy finish. Then my favorite part, look at the smile. And this is a player in Bachelor who started every game last season. This year coming off the bench. But this is a Creighton's team.
team under Jim Flannery that you do see pretty equitable minutes. You're going to be seeing time if you're on this team. Meanwhile, largest lead of today for the Blue Jays. They snuffed out any chance of a comeback. You never felt like that spark. Do you have the focus and the maturity to make sure that you put away the game, that you continue to play at a high level? Murata has been so good in that face-up game. And doing it again. I just love Chloe Murata. She's the first female athlete from her family to play, and they said she just embodies everything about Marquette. She's gritty, she works hard, she's a smart kid who does well in the classroom. I mentioned her playing all 40 minutes in their most recent game, a win against DePaul. She has not left the floor today again. More scoring, Kennedy Townsend perfectly kisses it off glass. Just Mallory Brake and Keani Lockett left scoreless right now, but Brake has made multiple big defensive plays like that. Really love the help defense by Brake. It's her second block of the game, and then Lockett, a player that I think is going to be special for Creighton. I think she just does a great job of being in the right spots at the right time. Just the focus and the intentionality defensively was not there for them today. Keani Lockett at the free throw line. And Murata did check out of the game for the first time. So she'll play 38 plus minutes in this one, coming off of a 40 point output. Hair launching a three. Then they'll be at St. John's with just one win this season, currently ranked 24th in the country. Again, go back, watch the film, pick out the things that you can learn from. If there are positives and bright spots, look to build on those. And you just got to keep building. And then for Creighton, their next test, a tough one as well in Seton Hall. Again, one of the teams that I think is, is going to be an NCAA tournament team. They have put together a really good roster over there and excited to watch that one. But what a showing here for Coach Flannery and, and the Blue Jays. They avoid losing four straight at home, and they give Marquette their fourth loss in the last five games, 68-42.